Hi, I'm Jason Gorber from ThatShelf.com and we're here to talk about The King's Man. Big shelf. So this is The King's Man. The King's Man is basically a prequel to the Kingsman series. Uh, Matthew Vaughn directs and who's in this? Who's in this thing? Ray Fiennes is in it. Gemma Arterton. Uh, Arterton. Gemma Arterton. It's hard to say. Uh, Reese Irfa... Man, I'm doing bad here. Ray Fiennes. Gemma Arterton. Uh, Reese uh, Efans, Matthew Good, Tom Hollander, Harris Dickinson, Dana Brule actually shows up in this. Uh, Jamon Hans, who has a pretty uh, major role, and Charles Dance. So it starts in South Africa, and we sort of have a uh, flashback uh, um, to um, a bit of tragedy that sort of gets the uh, the role going. You get this sense of um, uh, a very British story, as it were, that you have uh, sort of Batman-y in, in, in a funny way, uh, in the sense that you have, uh, you know, the whole great, uh, or Spider-Man-y, uh, great power, great responsibility, but like when you're rich, you got to give back, essentially. And so you have um, people uh, going to a British-run concentration camp by Lord Kitchener that suddenly all gets forgotten about as the narrative goes on. And that kind of speaks to how the whole film plays, that it dances around historical atrocities and actual lives lost by millions and millions of people and uses it as pretty pathetic fodder for a silly comic booky film. Uh, look, Ray Fiennes is great. Uh, he's always great. Um, uh, the way the story unfolds, there's a few twists that actually make it a little bit more interesting uh, than it otherwise would be. You actually have characters that actually have uh, deal with consequences that otherwise they wouldn't. But when it comes to the fore, it's trying so hard to be somewhere between like a straight up normal sort of superhero movie and something like... Um, I mean, one of these sort of uh, weird James Bondy uh, films where don't you know that there's a uh, underlying conspiracy th uh, through the entire global world order? Um, uh, something like Spectre, which is actually for me one of the less interesting things about this that kind of film. But the difference is it does this um, in a conspiratorial way with actual world history, which, given the way that politics is going these days, I think toying around with this kind of historicity is not such a great idea. I don't care. You tell the stories you want to tell. And if it was actually good and interesting and actually did interesting twists, um, meta narratives, uh, Watchmen sort of does that uh, in kind of interesting ways. I think that this just ends up being banal. And that basically what you're doing is you're relying upon the historic impact of actual deaths of actual millions of people uh, to somehow underscore uh, what's going on. The post credit sequence being the most egregious of all. I was like, seriously? This is where you're going you're gonna to play with this uh, playground as if this is totally fine. I mean, it's one thing when we actually go back, we've sort of allowed people like Genghis Khan um, to be like, oh, that's just a character who just murdered a bunch of people and it's totally fine. But when you're dealing with like sort of real life situations, such as the cousins uh, who ran um, uh, the Empire of Russia, the Empire of Prussia, and the Empire of um, uh, uh, Britain, uh, it, there's there's opportunity there to do stuff uh, that's narratively interesting, um, uh, sort of pitting the entirety of the First World War as just being three cousins that kind of um, used to bully each other, um, three uh, 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 relatives of Queen Victoria, who uh, uh, ended up controlling the major powers in the First World War. But it really just comes down to something that is just using that as wallpaper. And in the end, we have really poorly drawn characters the action isn't particularly good it's not shot particularly well and the most sort of tiresome thing of all the suits don't look that great like i understand that they're going for that uh, a retro look it's a very specific uh uh thing but the whole the whole shtick of the kingsman was that sort of um you know uh, swinging 60s kind of incredible impeccable style um uh and and here by by going backwards it just feels as overstuffed and uh, sort of out of place as the film itself. So Kingsman for me is just just complete dud. Uh, there's 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 enough of it that sort of led a direction where it could have gone that it becomes even more frustrating than simply just silly. So yeah, something uh, 
something that I'm not sure that you're going to rush out to actually experience. I don't even think it's important to see within the grand context of the Kingsman saga. They're apparently working on a third film of the continuation of that um, storyline. But this, uh, really, it's, it's, a, it's a prequel that is as unnecessary as, uh, as it is in some ways just just really misguided. So there we are. I wish I had better things to say, but The Kingsman is a flop. Uh, for ThatShelf.com, I'm Jason Gorber. Thanks so much for watching. We will see you next video. All the best.